Uh, all right, so let's dive into making some FX um, for this. And um, for this, we need to plan a little bit what we're going to do. We are going to add some rain and we want to vary the rain um, for different shots. So the rain amount and we want to add um, sort of moving water to this. So let's uh, start with the base. Um, so maybe we'll just set it, this up with one for now and we'll pick our FX department here. And so we know that for all shots, we are going to add uh, water. Um, so if that was all we were gonna do, we could just select all shots um, here and we could add uh, the water and uh, it would be applied to all these shots. However, we are going to do some, um, some rain amounts and uh, I think uh, we are gonna do it so that uh, the first two shots have a sort of heavy rain uh, the two following shots have uh, sort of medium rain, and the last three have uh, almost no rain at all. Uh, so that means that we should set up three of these contexts. And so uh, we can go back to our template here and just set this to uh, three and run it again. And uh, we'll pick that selection. So uh, the first two here will be heavy rain. And uh, the second one here will be these two uh, shots. So this will be our sort of medium rain. And this will be uh, the last three shots. And we are going to uh, create uh, an output here. We uh, are gonna make rain. We are gonna call this uh, rain as the output. And uh, for this one, we're gonna do a pre-post of uh, uh, sort of 20 frames, perhaps. Uh, so the rain has time to build up. And we're going to do another output. And for this one, we are going to uh, call it water. Uh, all right. And so uh, how do we do this? Well, so we can start uh, by making our water. What we need to do is, first of all, the water is going through the boats. We need to make a hole and we need to add some waves. Uh, to this. We are going to work inside of these uh, outputs so they can be separated. Um, so if we go into the water here, I am going to lay down a soft modify. And uh, with the soft modify, you can select several things. And uh, so we are going to select uh, these uh, colliders in the boats. Uh, like so. And we are going to select the water. All right, once we jump in here, uh, so these uh, colliders are, um, all right, so we are going to uh, unpack these. And we are going to do blast. And in this, we should be able to select the collider. So uh, this will be our uh, water. Uh, and then we can sort of invert this blast. And uh, that's the boats. And uh, when you do water, you want to have it as a box. Um, that way you can sort of um, add uh, the, uh, the visibility factor to it in shading. So it goes you know, darker as it goes deeper. Um, so we're gonna do a poly extrude. So actually we might do a subdivide first actually. Maybe boost that to four, something like that. And with the poly extrude, uh, we are going to do a distance of one. And then uh, we need to output the back. And then we are going to we need to sort of off offset this. Um, so we can put on a transform here to sort of offset it back with minus one. So, um, um, and uh, now we can add some water movement to it. and. Uh, to make things easy, we are just going to do a mountain. And I think we are going to go for sort of 0 0.5 maybe. And this maybe 0 0.25. Uh, we just want it to be very subtle. And then do some animation here. Um, we can also add a sort of a wave. Um, so if you have labs, you can use this um, 
lab assigned to um, to set up some things. Uh, so maybe we'll do speed. Something like that. And so now we have some sort of uh, moving water. Um, so now we want to get rid of this um, intersection with the boat. And uh, all we need to do, hopefully, is uh, do a boolean here. And uh, I think yeah, we'll do the opposite. All right. Uh, then we need to pack this. And so this is very important. Um, unless you pack it, uh, the USD is going to go crazy uh, and uh, with booleans and stuff like that. So uh, because we unpacked it, we need to pack it again. Pack. Uh, all right, so as we jump up, we will notice a few issues that we need to fix. So we jump up to the Solaris uh, stage here again, and uh, what we'll see is is that the 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 water plane has moved, and our booleans are way over here now, and that is not what we want. And the reason why this happens is because the original plane that was uh, placed by layout, uh, it was sort of moved and transformed and stuff like that, and. Uh, when we do the boolean and stuff, uh, it basically creates a brand new mesh uh, that is sort of zeroed out. So what happens is that we, we get the inverse of that uh, transform. Um, and so in SOP modify there are a few settings that's supposed to, to sort of mitigate that stuff. Uh, it's like uh, apply inverse transform and stuff, uh, but they actually <coughs> uh, won't help us this time. But there are a few settings we need to do on the SOP crate, first of all. So if you look uh, in the... Um, in the um, Sync graph here, we'll see that the sub modify here contains uh, another water. And so it's very important to use this import prefix uh, here. It's a little bit hidden. And uh, some people you know, ask, like, why, why can't this prim Like, I've selected my primitives here. But in this case, it's a little bit tricky because this is what is going into the sub modifier, whereas this is where you want to place what's coming out. So we're just going to drag and drop our water there. And so now the water mesh, so it should have uh, been changed. Uh, another thing we need to do is uh, we need to uh, make sure that this is uh, animated uh, when it comes out. And so you have a few settings for that in here. Uh, by default, it is uh, it is going to do it if it's time dependent. And we can see here that it is time dependent with this little clock. Uh, but we can also check this topology attributes animated. And in the export soap, we also want what's coming into it to be animated because the boats are moving. So uh, we are going to select that one. Now let's uh, fix this transform issue that we're seeing. Uh, so we need to null out the original uh, movement of the grid. And so we can do this by uh, creating an XForm edit. And um, we will select the water here. Uh, we'll set this to set or create. And then instead of append, we'll do replace all local transforms. And now that should be all good. And the water is now um, cut out from the boats. So just to check the before and after here, this is what we get. And um, now that we're up here, we don't actually see, we don't see what's happening. We, we don't see the, the water change, um, which uh, you might freak out <laughs> and be like, hey, what just happened? Well. The thing is that these uh, outputs, they will always be sort of disabled uh, by default. And uh, the way to make sure that you can see them is to go to the preview switcher here, and then you can switch uh, to, so that's active. And um, uh, there is good reason for this. Um, for one, it's, uh, it allows this not to be calculated all the time. Um, and so when you play the timeline and stuff like that, you don't have to worry about that simulation and stuff like that. So. Um, this uh, this preview is your <clears throat> is your friend for that. Uh, all right, so uh, now we're going to work on the rain uh, aspect. And so with the rain, uh, the way to do this is we want to uh, set up uh, some sort of rain in here, and we want each shot to affect the rain, and. Um, and so the rain has to come before the shots. So we're going to move this one up here. If we jump in here, uh, we'll create a um, sub crate this time. 
This one uh, we are going to call uh, rain. All right, and we'll jump into that one. And we are going to do a, uh, a pop network. And we are going to need some sort of grid to um, to use as our uh, emitter. So I'm going to add one of those here. And uh, maybe move it up a little bit. <clears throat> and uh, I just sort of want to cover the... Uh, the main area here. We don't need to go totally crazy. That seems good. And uh, we'll plug it into our DOP network here, or PopNet. And uh, inside here, we are going to use mostly defaults. Um, I am going to set the birth rate to 10 times the amount and double the uh, max amount per frame. And uh, the rest should be as it is, and I will add a pop wind here. Wind. And I'm gonna simulate this to be sort of gravity speed, uh, but you could also do like sideways and air resistance and stuff like that to play around with. Uh, for this purpose, we're just gonna uh, keep it like, like that. And we're gonna jump up. <coughs> and uh, for this simulation, we're going to set the start frame to 99 nine, uh, or 980. And so this is also why VFX also uh, always start at frame 1001 because then you can do pre-roll and stuff like that. So how do we control this uh, this rain per uh, per shot? Well, so in Solaris there is uh, something called an edit context node or edit context options. And uh, what this node does it allows you, you to send a variable upstream. So you can set something here. So we can call this, uh, you know, rain. And we'll set this to be a number. And um, we'll set this to uh, 100, let's say. So now in our, if we go back into our SOPs here, we can actually use that as a variable. So we can uh, do a group here. And uh, we have this uh, percent slider. So we're going to set this to points and uh, we'll be able to, to select the points coming from the popnet. And um, by sliding this, uh, we can you know keep uh, a certain amount of, of particles. And so in here, I can write context option and it will sort of come up and help you a little bit there if you. Um, and we'll just write rain. Uh, right, and uh, we can also uh, do a, uh, a blast here just to uh, make sure they are gone and we'll select that group and delete the non-selected. And uh, what is left is uh, the points. And so by uh, um, changing this now, we can change the amount of, uh, of particles that are going to be visible from 100% to uh, as low as we want. And uh, so we can use this now per shot. Uh, so for these two shots here, we want it to be full on rain. And uh, for these two shots here, you know, we want the rain to be, you know, medium rain. Uh, maybe it's 50% uh, or 30%, like so. And the last one, uh, it's going to be really low. Maybe it's 5% uh, or even lower, 3% And uh, if we look through the <coughs> render cameras here, uh, we can see these little um, little dots change. Um, so this is how we can affect uh, FX from per shot. And um, if you're an FX artist and you wanna sort of know what the context of these are, which one is currently being uh, viewed and stuff, um, there are. If you go to the context um, option in Solaris you will see the ones that exist. So we do have a background image, which is the plate, if you want to reuse that for something. Um, for example, to use in COPS or something like that. Uh, you can also use the context and the output. And um, and you would just, um, instead of rain, you would write context. Um, so if you want to use that to do uh, logic in Python, to do switches or whatever you want, uh, that is uh, uh, fully possible to do. All right, so with the rain, uh, we are just going to output particles uh, so the lighter can uh, sort of mesh it and um, 
So we don't need to, to cache it or anything like that. If you are an FX artist and you're doing something really heavy, you would probably want to, um, you know, do a file cache here uh, or something like that to, um, to cache the simulation out. And the good part here is that if you, if you do the simulation here and then uh, strip out stuff, then you could, um, you could also do one uh, simulation here for, for the entire save. Yeah, this is just particles, so I think we can sort of output it on the fly. All right, so let's summarize here what we have done for um, for our uh, FX. So we have set up rain, and uh, the rain will be available to come out for all shots. Uh, and we have made these shot groups that control the amount of rain. So 100%, 30%, and 3%. Uh, we have also made uh, water uh, animation and stuff like that, and um, and we have cut out the the um, the water hole here, and um, to make sure now I can switch between these outputs, and we should see that this one only outputs the water, and this one will only output. Uh, the rain. The only thing that's going to be output that is the actual changes that we made. So even though we see water here and stuff like that, um, it doesn't matter because um, the only thing that's going to be, be exported and changed is what's inside of these. Uh, so we're pretty happy with that and um, uh, we have also set up these um, department layers to have this uh, suffix. So one is called water, one is called rain. And uh, that just means that when we load it later, we can choose to uh, ignore or update them separately, which can be pretty nice. Uh, all right, so um, now we're gonna set up our collections and like always, you don't have to, if you want to, you can just press the preview. And um, when you're dealing with FX, because the preview has to uh, flip to uh, all shots once, um, just to uh, sort of verify that they exist and work, um, it will take a little bit of time, but it's a couple of seconds uh, when we're dealing with two uh, simulations like this. So you could just use this and export everything uh, as you want, uh, but let's set up uh, separate so we have that. So we'll have rain, and remember these names are just for you and what you want to call them to memorize them. Uh, and so we're going to output for all shots here, and uh, we're going to uncheck that and just select uh, the rain. Uh, for the other one, we are going to call it water sim, perhaps, and uh, we're gonna um, uncheck that and do the water. I'll do the rain here first, like so, and that looks good, so let's submit. All right, <clears throat> so that took a couple of minutes and now everything should be out and uh, we will move on.